Okay, just checking the sound. We'll start in a moment. I'm just waiting for the participants to enter. Okay, I think let's get started. Guys, just to, to show you that your teacher still exists, but I'm gonna switch off the camera. Otherwise I have to look into, look at myself the whole time. Okay, so there's, I said to us, it's always good in a Zoom just to show them that it's actually a human that's talking, not somebody else. Okay, let's start with the lesson. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to go through my hostess today. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time around my hostess. Um, because it seems to be a section that, that catches some people easily. It's, it's actually a very easy section. And please note that it's a section that used to be in paper one and in paper two in previous years until last year. And now it, they've moved all of my hosts, I think, into paper two, as far as I remember. But it's all in one paper now. It's 16 marks out of the paper. And we're going to spend quite a bit of time around the questions of how they ask my hostess. So I'm going to give you practice questions. You're going to practice it. And then we're going to discuss it. I've already loaded the first practice questions for you this morning. So if you, oh, sorry, you don't need to see that. Okay. Um, so I've already loaded the first practice questions for you guys. Um, and there it is. On, on the Google Classroom under Lesson 8, you'll see there's some short questions on my OSIS that you need to answer. So guys, please, you've got to go in, you've got to open the Google Docs, and you've got to complete the questions. Um, you will receive a receipt on what you've answered afterwards via email. It will say to you, you've completed the worksheet. And it might even give you the marks in certain cases that you achieve for that, that task. But you've got to go in and do it. I am monitoring that. And as you would have seen, I'm actually sending messages to your parents um, if you're not doing it. Okay, so that is uh, what you need to do. Yesterday, you've drawn a mind map on my hostess. Uh, we're going to quickly go through that mind map. And tomorrow's lesson will also be on my hostess. And I'm just going to try and uh, describe it in another way, just to give you different ways of uh, that we are teaching it, so that in the end, we get the right method for you to be able to remember it. Also, um, I've got quite a few sets of notes on it. And watch, go watch the other videos, the animations. I, I cannot on paper. Again, I cannot, and I have to, um, I cannot on paper show you as effectively as the animations do it. Also, remember that when we're talking about mitosis, it's actually just an extension of mitosis. It's when we form sperm cells and egg cells. And if we actually take a look at it, and I'm, um, what we're going to see is that with mitosis, of mitosis, I'm going to have um, so it doesn't want to properly do it now. Uh, my pen's not working properly, but I normally have an analogy that I give you guys. I say I P on the max interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And what happens um, on my process is that whole process is going to happen twice. It's just going to happen twice. So we're going to pee on the math twice, IP math twice. 
Okay, so let's quickly go through this. Why isn't it doing that? Sorry. Okay, we're going to start with pro phase one is always remember to always include in meiosis that number. If you don't include those numbers, because there's a one and there's going to be a two. And if you don't include those numbers when you describe the phase, it's going to be wrong. Okay, so in interface, that, that is the process happening before this, we're going to have DNA replication that we talked about, which means we double up on the amount of chromosomes that we have. So we actually go from 2N to 4N for a short while. Okay, now the centrioles then move to opposite ends of the cell. Please don't confuse, uh, confuse centrioles and centromeres. Okay, centrioles, we also can refer to them as centrosomes, but the centrosome actually split and they move to opposite poles of the cell. The nuclear membrane and nucleus disappear. Okay, so you can see there's no nuclear membrane in here. And the chromosomes have doubled during interface and formed chromatid. So each of these two is a chromatid. Um, and of course, I don't have colors here to show it to you today. Let me, um, so that's one chromatid and that's another chromatid. And they are connected together with a centromere. Okay, so the chromatid form, and we call this a replicator, that X shape that we get. We call it a replicated chromosome. Okay, then uh, we see the spindle fibers form, and the spindle fibers are going to attach themselves uh, to each chromatid or chromosome. Then we go to metaphase. So the spindle fibers pull the chromosomes onto the equator. Meta stands for middle, they put it onto the middle of the cell. And you can see the arrangement, and we're going to meet the phase one now. Remember, we're busy with meiosis and not mitosis. So this has to happen twice. This is the first time this is happening. Over here, we've now got chromosomes sorting themselves out on either side of the equator. And we call these chromosomes homologous pairs. Homologous pairs. Homologous pairs meaning homo, meaning the same logos, logic, the same logic. So homologous pairs are, are sorting themselves up on the equator. In anaphase, we have those homologous pairs then splitting up and moving into opposite poles of opposite poles of the um, of the equator. Okay, so they're moving to opposite poles. One is going to move to there, and one is going to move to there. So that's anaphase one. Then we get the first division. So the cell divides in the middle, and the chromosomes start to unwind, but they are not going to unwind completely because now we're going to go into prophase one, uh, prophase two. So from meter phase one, we go into prophase two. Now we get the centrioles moving to opposite poles again. So again, we've got some centrioles, and they're going to move to opposite poles. And in meter phase two, it's going to take those remaining chromosomes and line them up on the equator of each of the two cells. Notice there's now two cells over here, not just one cell. So it lines up the chromosomes, now single chromosomes, we call them daughter chromosomes, on each of the, or, or unreplicated chromosomes on each, uh, no, those are still replicated. Apologies. On each side of the, um, or in the middle of each of the cells. We then get anaphase two and they move to opposite poles, they move to opposite poles, they move to opposite poles, and we get a division of four cells happening. Let's look at this in another way. This process happens in spermatogenesis or oogenesis, which means the forming of the sperm and the forming of the 
Excel. And um, over here, we're gonna go do this in much more detail. I actually wanna leave this diagram for later. Uh, let's go to this one. Uh, which shows the differences of mitosis and meiosis. Okay, now in mitosis, I'm forming two identical cells that's exactly the same as the original cell. In meiosis, I'm forming four cells that are genetically different from the initial cell. Okay, so that is the purpose of meiosis, to form these sperm cells and egg cells, because if a sperm cell and egg cell joins up again, we want genetic variation to happen. And also, I do not want to increase the, um, the number of chromosomes. So I need to end up with a diploid cell again. And so before, if we want to join up, it's called a diploid. I need a haploid and a haploid. A 1N and a 1N to join up and form a 2N cell. Let's go through the other notes. And I'm going to go into a bit more detail of what's going to happen here, especially when we're talking about prophase and metaphase. Okay, so please know your definitions. Know what cell division is, know what chromosomes are, know what a chromatid is that's forming part of a replicated chromosome, know what daughter cells and cytokinesis is. We're going to find uh, myosis happening. So over here we've got prophase one. We can actually see. Just increase the size, yeah. In prophase one, apologies. I can actually see the my centriole splitting up, my spindle fibers forming. I can see the chromosomes have formed, and then over here I can see the homologous pairs. We also sometimes call them bivalent pairs, lining up on the equator, and then in anaphase one, they are going to split up and move to opposite sides of the cells, and the cell starts to split, and then we get into metaphase one. The moment we have metaphase one, we're going to get metaphase two. So let's take a look at metaphase two. So in both of these cells, the process is going to happen. This is actually prophase one. And my pen's not working like it's supposed to today. And then we get metaphase two, and we get single chromosomes lining up on the equator, not pairs, and then splitting up in anaphase. Um, and in, in, um, in anaphase, they split up and move to opposite poles. And we get four cells forming that are going to be genetically different from one another. One process that we haven't done yet that I want to show you is that when, um, when the cells are then yet yeah, chosen in detail, when the cells are in prophase, they are going to overlap one another. We call it crossing over. And they actually exchange genetic material with one another. And we can see it happening over here. We can see the coloration showing the crossing over and exchanging of genes has happened. And that is one of the factors that creates genetic diversity. And when we move to the next diagram in anaphase one, we can see, okay, you see, they are mixed. They are mixed up um, genes. So they're mixed up chromosomes. And then we end up with, and here it shows it very nicely after with telophase two, we can see not one, not a single one of those uh, chrom uh, chromosomes inside the cells are the same. So it creates genetic diversity. Another thing that creates genetic diversity is that in metaphase one, these chromosomes can sit anywhere they like. And we call this process, we actually call it um, random arrangement. So they can sit anywhere they um, on or on either side of this, on either side of the equator, and that is called random arrangement. That 
it also creates genetic variation when we form sperm cells and egg cells. Okay. Why do we want mitosis, meiosis? We want to create genetic diversity. We want to make sure that we create haploid cells, that when they come together, they form a diploid um, cell again um, during fertilization. And that's a major thing that we, two things that we want. Okay, carrier types we described yesterday, and I, I don't want to go into detail today on the diseases, diseases relating to my process. I would rather do that tomorrow after you've done your first practice question. So I'm going to leave that for now. Guys, let's stop there. We're going to take this step by step. Um, and let's stop there for a second. Please go and do this test. The link for this is right here. And listen, I there's the link. Please go do it and see how you um, how you see. And please go and watch the videos. If you haven't done them yet, today, please go watch the videos on all the animations on my OSIS. Thank you very much. Can I ask, are there any questions at this stage with regards to my OSIS? You can also put it in the chat box. I also want to thank you guys. Uh, a lot more have, of you have gone and you've done the, the test on lesson one to five, the worksheet electronically. For those, if you, there's anyone on this group that hasn't done it yet, uh, please go and do it. It's listed under lesson six, the link. Okay, if there's no questions then, I don't see any questions in the chat box. Thank you very much. I will then go through my OSINs again tomorrow. So when is our first life, life science cycle test? Okay, guys, let's sort this out on Monday when you guys are back. Uh, there is a cycle test timetable coming out. Um, and we're going to have, uh, looks like we're rather going to have a cycle test week. We're not going to have a cycle test uh, necessarily every week but we, they're gonna group it together all in one week because of the late start that you guys are getting. Um, so it's gonna work differently than what you're used to. But in between, you're gonna see, I'm gonna have quite a few tests for you. I'm already busy with your baseline assessment uh, that I've received from the department and putting that up electronically so I can get the marks electronically. And there's quite, every week, we, you're gonna have what you call a topic test. So you've already got, uh, gone through three topics now, or we're busy with the third main topic now. And so every week I'm giving you guys what we call a topic test, a, a test specifically on the topic that we've been busy with for that week. And that's sent for, uh, to us from the department. But let's confirm dates next week when you are back. Um, sir? Yes. Uh, were we supposed to write the, the test, uh, the lesson one to lesson five test in our books? Yes. Um, uh, my instruction was both on the WhatsApp group as well as in the Google Classroom that you write it first and then you go and do the electronic one. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sorry, sir, by writing it, um, should we like, we go onto the link and then copy the questions from that link and write it? No, no, no. Um, if you take a look, I'm gonna go to my Google Classroom now and the lesson six where it's listed there, you can actually go in and unfortunately, there, there it is now. Okay, so uh, because the questions on the, the questions on the electronic version, it's not all of the questions in the worksheet. So you download the worksheet. There it is, there is the worksheet. You download the worksheet, you complete it. And then afterwards, you go to the link and you complete the questions that I could place onto, uh, onto the electronic test. Then you go and do that one. And you'll see it's a lot similar, but it's not all of the questions. Okay. so. I'm like, I've already done the electronic test. So what I'm just gonna do is write over the, 
Yeah, one that needs to go. Just go board. do the written one as well, please. Okay. Okay, then. Thanks. Okay. Guys, any more questions? Just checking the chat box. Okay. Then if there's no more questions, thank you very much. I will see you guys tomorrow and then we'll go do my hostess again, but in a bit more detail and probably also go through some of the diseases that's relating to my hostess.